Hi everyone, I'm Olivier Pommel, CEO and co-founder at Datadog. I want to thank you all for joining us today. This is our very first virtual conference, and while I wish I could see all of you in person, holding the event online has opened the door for many more of you to attend from many parts of the world. So welcome. Before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsors for partnering with us and helping make this event a success. You can meet with them in our virtual exhibit hall during the day. I also wanted to note that we will donate all proceeds from our workshops to UNICEF, Global Food Banking Network, NAACP, and Black Girls Code. And if you haven't yet signed up for a workshop, you can still do it right now on the DASH website. They are a great occasion to get hands-on experience with many of the new technologies we'll talk about today. It's been a very busy year at Datadog, and we launched over 200 features and integrations since we saw you at Dash in 2019. And you should expect the same from us this year. Yet, we're not here today to go over feature releases, but rather to talk about exciting new things that are coming to the Datadog platform. When Alexi and I started Datadog, we had a simple objective, to bring DevOps together and to break down silos. And although we've come a long way since then, and observability across teams has become a tangible reality, we're not done yet. We still have to add breadth and depth to the data we gather for you. We have to help you do more and be smarter with that information. And we have to help you keep up and get ahead while your applications and infrastructure are getting more complex and more critical than ever before. We also have more silos to break down and more teams to bring to the party. So today, we're all very excited to show you what's coming next. And I'd like to invite our CTO, Alexi, to start the tour. Thank you, Olivier. What a year. How much the world has changed since Dash 2019. It's hard to know even where to begin. Well, for one thing, we all depend a lot more on online services to live our daily lives. And that puts you in a unique position because your day job probably involves running some of these services that the rest of us depend on. In turn, you depend on us to understand how your applications and your infrastructure are working. You depend on us to anticipate and detect problems. And you depend on us when things go awry because we follow you down the rabbit hole to diagnose and fix issues, whatever the cause may be and wherever it may be found. So we've doubled down. We continue to improve all existing products at a rapid clip. We keep adding more integrations to the rest of your stack, and we're building new products to cover even more ground. So think of these 200 updates that we've released since last year as a sign of that commitment. Now we've done our best to build a seamless platform that gives you observability of large scale applications and infrastructure in real time. No silos, no disparate collection of incompatible tools just one platform for one big team. But we know we're just getting started when we look at all that we need to do. So recently, we've decided to go deeper inside the applications, always at scale, always in real time. To tell you more, I'd like to invite Brad to take the virtual stage. Last year, we announced a major evolution of Datadog APM, tracing without limits, which allowed you to send everything and choose what to retain. Well, today I'm excited to announce a major upgrade to tracing without limits. Live search. Live search allows you to search across all your distributed traces in the last 15 minutes. And you can search by any tag on any span. And since there's no sampling, you have all your tracing data at your fingertips during an outage or a performance investigation. Now, a major architectural consideration was that we had to design live search so it could work at the scale of the largest web applications in the world. And in order to do this, that meant we had to ingest and query tens of billions of spans on the fly. And so, we built a custom in-memory data store to allow for this scale. And it's not just optimized for the scale of web user traffic, it's optimized for the scale of modern high throughput streaming services and data pipelines. 
Let's take a look at Live Search in action. This is one of Datadog's environments. And as you can see, all traces are streaming in live. You can see in the center of the screen that this is over 2 million spans per second. So it's operating at extremely high throughput. Think of this as a tale of your services live. Now, if I go down and I look at my services, I see it's not just my web services, but I actually even include Kafka here, which is a very high throughput streaming service for us. It's taking in telemetry data from over 12,000 customers. Now, I'm the service owner of a service called Driveline, and I just got paged because one customer is having occasional slow queries. So I'm gonna go filter down to Driveline, and then I'm gonna filter down to just that one customer in particular where I got paged on. I'm gonna go ahead and filter down to the max latency because I wanna see the worst case. And as I do that, I see the occasional slow queries at six seconds and seven seconds. So I'm gonna filter down this data set further to just the slowest traces. So I'm gonna take the duration slider and go to about five seconds. So now anything that's over five seconds will be captured here. And now I'm gonna go click into one of these distributed traces. And you can see a full distributed trace from the browser to Nginx to a top level web service down to driveline, my service that I have to fix. And now that I know the slow query here, I'm gonna go deploy a new version of the code to production to fix it. And as I do this, I can remove duration and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add the version tag here just that version of the code that's being deployed in real time right now. And as I do that, I see 100% of the traces coming in live. And I see the requests, the errors, and the latency percentiles. So with live search, whether you're deploying an application to production for the first time, or you're maintaining one of the largest legacy apps in the world, live search will work at your scale. And today, live search is GA. And to summarize, you can search all traces live for the last 15 minutes by any tag on any span. And it's included in Datadog APM. Thanks, Brad. So Live Search gives you a very granular view of all incoming requests going through your applications and microservices. And when you want to follow one of your customers, for instance, or look at who is experiencing high latency and why, but well, tracing is often the best way to do that. At the same time, when you see containers or instances running hot, you want to know what they're doing. Are they spending CPU cycles on real useful work? Or are there any bottlenecks? Are they getting too many requests? To answer these questions, you need to look at all this compute with a different lens. Hugo is going to tell you more about what we've built to do just that. Thank you, Alexi. Most of us have used profilers while developing or maintaining applications. They give us deep visibility into how our code runs, allowing us to understand the bottlenecks as well as how to improve application performance. However, we don't use profiling tools as much as we should because legacy profiling tools do not solve for cloud environments or continuous deployment. They require you to SSH into a machine, start the profiler with the associated overhead, download a file, and open it in a separate desktop application. And you'd be constantly asking yourself, did I get the right moment, the right machine? What if the problem happened for 10 minutes on a Sunday? What if the problem cannot be reproduced outside of production? Because these tools are not always on and require manual steps. Few engineers actually spend time using them. And it's a pity because profiling is one of the most useful tools for software engineers. That's why I'm very excited to announce today the GA of Datadog Continuous Profiler. It runs continuously in production and analyzes code performance release after release. It can run in production because it has a very low overhead, less than 3% max CPU, 
as well as no additional latency due to runtime pauses. It supports most languages with .NET and PHP coming later this year. Continuous Profiler points directly to problem down to the line of code across multiple resource bottlenecks. CPU consumption, memory allocation, locks, garbage collection, blocking I.O. Our data is strongly integrated in Datadog's platform, which allows you to pivot from multiple parts of Datadog into the data showcased by Datadog Continuous Profiler. It means you can look at code level performance across a large pool of applications over a long time, as well as drill down to what happened for a single request. Finally, we bring years of performance engineering knowledge through actionable recommendations, such as tweaking the garbage collector or spotting deadlocks, allowing even the newest engineers to benefit from insights from seasoned veterans. Let's see it in action. Let's start on another great tool, Datadog APM. We are looking at here a service page for a Java application product recommendation, and it's surfacing high-level metrics for all the transactions flowing through that application. We can see that this application just went through a release and that with that release, customers are experiencing high latencies at high percentiles. We can also notice by looking at Kubernetes metrics that the pods this application is running on are also experiencing higher CPU usage. Because I have Datadog Continuous Profiler running on this application, I can click at any point in time and view the related profiling information. We are now looking at the profiling side of things. Here, each of these lines represents one minute of profiling data happening on a given host. It's filtered on our service, our environment, as well as on the faulty version. It's also sorted by CPU so that we can look at profiling data when the application is maxed out on CPU. Let's click on the top one. Here is an aggregated flame graph of stack traces. Each of these frames represents a method of your code and the width of a frame represents the CPU consumption of that method. We could also have the same representation for memory allocation, wall time, I.O., locks, etc. We can clearly see from the summary table on the right that there are two methods that are consuming most of my application CPU. Product load asset over here, even line 62 in your code, and model training compute coefficients, line 132 in your code. By now, I know the exact two lines of code that consume most of my application CPU and very probably causing high latency. So I jump back into my IDE and improve these methods performance. You can also notice that we run analysis on profiling data. We surfaced a couple of other potential improvements you could do. We spotted some deadlock threads as well as a couple of garbage collection settings that you can tweak. Let's look at it from another angle. We are back on APM. Here, looking at a single request for the same service that lasts for 20 seconds, which is pretty long. We can see that most of this request was spent inside the service. So the reason for its high latency is, is inside my code. Because I have Datadog Continuous Profiler running, I can filter and tightly linked with APM, I can filter down the profiling data to exactly that request and exactly the threads running that request. That's how I get this new code tab, and it's pretty unique. With the code tab, I can get a breakdown of the time inside my code by type. So I can see that two thirds is spent running on CPU and the remaining part between thread parks and garbage collection. I can also see that on CPU, the same method, model training compute coefficient on line 132, took most of the CPU time. So with those two methods, we came through the same conclusion 
let's jump into my IDE and improve that method. Starting today, you can get Datadog Continuous Profiler, an always-on, low-overhead, code-level performance analysis in production across CPU, memory allocation, locks, I.O. with the ability to zoom in on a single transaction. And it works for any language, any application, not just web applications like the one I just demoed. In fact, we use it at Datadog to understand the performance of our high-throughput data processing pipelines that consume trillions of data points per day. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. Continuous profiling, always on, in production, available when and where you need it the most, without having to do anything. Where do I sign up? When we started to dog food continuous profiling on our own systems, it opened our eyes to a number of performance bottlenecks that we suspected but just couldn't isolate. So I'm very confident that you're going to find profiling very useful to dissect the performance of your applications and squeeze the most out of your code. But wait, there's more. So far, we've covered large-scale tracing in real time, always on code profiling in production. So now, let's talk about how errors can affect customer experience, especially around code releases. And for that, I'm going to hand it over to Gabriel James. Hi, everyone. Application developers use Datadog to track, collect, and troubleshoot errors happening from their applications. But sometimes, some errors happen so often that it's easy to get lost looking at millions of events and not knowing on which one you should focus on right now. Let's say you are an application developer working for an e-commerce website and that a customer reaches out, letting you know that there is an issue and that you cannot purchase a product. Let's see together how you can use Datadog ROM and APM all together in order to address this issue. In the ROM product, you can see the list of applications and easily pivot to the Explorer, where you can see every single page views and session from your user. Here, you can search for Mr. Doe, the user reached out, and see all the sessions of this user over the past period of time. Here, I can see there is an error on that page. Search for all the front-end resources loaded by this user, the front-end errors, and the back-end traces thanks to the integration with Datadog APM. And here, I can see there was an issue with the payment service being unavailable in the back-end. This is a critical issue, but how do I know how often this issue is happening? How many users are impacted and how much revenue is on the line? I want to troubleshoot it as fast as possible, so I want to know which code version introduced this error and how to fix it. In order to help you address all these questions, we are happy to announce today Datadog Error Tracking. Error Tracking allows you to group similar errors into a short list of issues that are easy to troubleshoot and read. With Datadog Error Tracking, I can see the evolution of error over time, see when a given issue started for the first time, if the release that I made five minutes ago fixed it, or if it's this release that introduced the, the issue. I can also see for every single occurrence of the issue, all the context that I need. So I can see who's the impacted user, where that user is, what's the OS and browser that is using. And I can see it in the context of the ROM session in order to understand what brought the, the error. I can use Datadog error tracking in conjunction with the monitors in order to be alerted if ever there is a spike in the number of errors or if ever a new issue is happening. Using Datadog error tracking, I can use an API or a CLI in order to upload the source map and make the code human readable and see the exact line that fired the error. Another good news for you today, if you are already using Datadog ROM, is that Error tracking is fully included at no additional charge for all the users of Datadog ROM. And it will soon be available for all the users of log management and APM products. It means you won't have to install a new SDK or maintain a new agent 
error tracking will take the errors that you already sent to Datadog, group them, and help you extract meaning out of them. Datadog error tracking is available for front-end errors already and will be available for mobile errors and crashes and server-side exceptions by the end of the year. If ever you want to know more and have additional questions, don't hesitate to pass by the Synthetics, ROM, and Error Tracking booth or to give it a try on your own Datadog account. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel James. Live search, continuous profiling, and error tracking let you dive in depth into the behavior of your applications. And we're all really eager to hear from you once you've tried them out. Now, let's zoom out of the application and into the other part of your daily lives, which is to keep everything up and running. For this next announcement, we're literally going back to our roots. It's about monitoring and alerting. I'd like to pass the mic to Sanju, who will tell you more. As our customers adopt new technologies, one of the first steps in operationalizing them is monitoring their health and performance. At Datadog, we strive to make this process as easy as possible. We provide out-of-the-box integrations that collect telemetry from over 500 technologies. Built-in dashboards, save log searches, and other tools help you make sense of all the work metrics, resource metrics, and events that signal the health of your technology stack. But how do you figure out which of those metrics to alert on? And how do you ensure that you and your team follow and learn alerting best practices for your infrastructure? We want to help you answer those questions and do the work for you. Today, I'm proud to introduce Recommended Monitors. Recommended Monitors are an out-of-the-box library of curated alert queries and thresholds. Datadog processes information from over 12,000 customers across hundreds of integrations with millions of alerts monitoring that information. We have a unique vantage point across the technology stacks of all our customers. As a result, when users have questions about how to alert on their infrastructure, we can draw from a deep well of internal knowledge to answer those questions. The close relationships that we have with our partners gives us access to expertise that helps us validate the solutions we provide to our users. With recommended monitors, we provide a seamless experience that lets you go from integration to alert fast. Let's take a look at an example. You've set up Datadog and it's detected Kubernetes running on your servers via auto discovery and tracking several metrics about its health. But which of these should you be alerted on? If you head to the recommended monitors page under monitors, new monitor, and click on the recommended monitors tab, you can select Kubernetes from the list of integrations and browse the list of recommendations provided by a team of experts. Today, I'd like to be notified when at least one pod is unavailable for my Kubernetes deployment. With one click, I'm taken to the edit page of the monitor where I'm provided with the right monitor query and recommended alert and warning thresholds for my Kubernetes integration out of the box. All I have to do is click save and I'm good to go. Regardless of which technology you're using now or will use in the future, we've got you covered. We've been working with domain experts to get recommendations for popular technologies like Kubernetes, Kafka, and MySQL. And we're working with our integration partners at MongoDB, Nginx, and HashiCorp to provide more recommendations, with even more coming soon. With recommended monitors, you can have the confidence that you're following alerting best practices for the critical technologies that power your business. There's no need to search for the right query to monitor your environment. You can learn what it is within Datadog itself. We will be showing recommended monitors in the exhibit hall throughout Dash. Check it out at a demo station today and sign up for early access. Thank you. Thank you, Sanju. Recommended monitors are going to help you save time when you're going to get it out to your stack. We're trying to make it easy for you to hit the ground running. Maybe you're new to the platform, or you're setting up new integrations, or maybe you're fine tuning your existing data of monitoring. Either way, please give them a try. Now, I'm thankful that we have a number of our friends and partners. We took an active role into making these recommendations for better monitoring. These recommended monitors will one day trigger and grab your attention, because as soon as you run a complex application, you are bound to have issues. And some of these issues, unfortunately, will turn into full-blown incidents. Because incidents are a fact of life. It's ironic 
but after 15 years of on-call life, I've come to recognize them as a sign that a complex application is alive, running and evolving. And until now, we've played a supporting role in that cast. But today, I think we're ready to step up. To share more on the topic of incidents with you, I'd like to hand it over to Meg. Thanks, Alexi. At Datadog, we know it's important to be able to resolve issues as they arise and have all the right data at your fingertips. But we hear from folks all the time that getting alerted isn't always enough. For folks who are on call, how many times have you received an alert and not know where to go from there? The first thing you ask yourself is, where do I look first? Which dashboards do I look at? Which logs? Which traces? Another question you may ask yourself is, should I build a response team? Who needs to be involved? Sometimes monitoring and incident response live in separate places, making them inaccessible, poorly integrated, and overly manual for investigating reporting on issues. Especially nowadays, while nearly all of us are learning to be remote, distributed work environments mean clear communication channels are vital. Issues need to be identified quickly, the right stakeholders notified, and a response team mobilized with access to the required information and tools with no friction. So today, we're introducing Datadog Incident Management. Whether you're on the go, in the office, or at home, you can begin to manage your incidents directly from Datadog. Let's check it out. How often have you received a page while you're out and have to scramble to get to your laptop? With the Datadog mobile app, I can immediately hop into Datadog and start investigating from my phone. From the monitor status page to this services dashboard. I'm seeing some suspicious behavior, so I'm going to hop over into my laptop and back into this dashboard. It's clear there's an incident, and looking at this data, there's likely customer impact, but it's unclear to me how severe that impact is. From this graph, I can directly declare an incident and automatically retain context because this graph is added as an incident signal. I'll leave severity as unknown for now while we continue our investigation, but I'll set my title. By default, I'm the incident commander, so I'll take it from here, although I can always reassign to another on-call commander via Ops Genie or PagerDuty. But I need to add someone else to assist with this response. Once I add them here, they'll receive an email notification through Datadog. The new Datadog Slack app will automatically open an incident Slack channel mapped with this incident's ID. The topic of the channel is updated as the incident is updated with a link directly back to Datadog. My team can manage our incident communication and our investigation in Datadog, all are remaining in Slack. I can also add important messages into the Datadog timeline from here as well. We can utilize the incident timeline, which constructs all of our important events, including any signals I collect during my investigation and important messages from the Slack channel allowing me to effectively coordinate response, see who's already investigated what, and collaborate with my team while all incident activity is centralized. As my team implements a fix, I can transition the incident from active to stable to resolved and accurately assess the severity. It's also important that we indicate the scope of customer impact, and I can do that by finalizing the impact time frame with a short description that I can refer to later in my incident review. Now let's not let good incidents go to waste. There's plenty of learnings to uncover from this. Together, my team can collaborate simultaneously in a Datadog notebook to complete this incident's postmortem and you can get started today. Head over to our virtual demo for more information on Datadog Incident Management. But before you go, I wanna give a big thank you to our partners. You can also see them on our expo floor. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks, Meg. The topic of incident management is very rich because responding to an incident is as much a technical response as it is a human one. Our objective here is to make it easier for you and your team to collaborate and know what's going on when it's the most stressful. By automating simple things away, by letting you focus more on the fixing and the communicating and learning, 
and less than the choreographing the chat to video to get it out to postmortem dance. We very much look forward to getting your thoughts and feedback. Now, I spoke about incident response being a human response. And there's nothing like a good story to share and extend our collective knowledge. The story I have in mind is one of managing the complexity of large scale systems. It's a story that's familiar to you and familiar to all of us. But what makes it particularly relevant is that it's about one of these systems that everyone uses without realizing it. To tell this story, I've asked Matoya from Google to join us. Hi, everyone. I'm Matthew Toya, an SRE director with Google Cloud Platform. In addition to leading part of our GCP SREs, I'm also responsible for our customer reliability engineers, or CREs, who work directly with our customers and partners. Datadog has been a great Google Cloud Platform partner for some time now, and I'm excited to be here today to talk about scaling up large systems and observability. Here's an overview of what we'll discuss. Most folks here are familiar with how hard software is, and the larger a system is, the more difficult it can seem to keep it scalable, reliable, and efficient. Though it may seem intuitive at first, it's worth diving into what makes large systems especially hard to reason about, why we have difficulty understanding these challenges, and what tools we have to help cope with this. Let's get into it. What makes large-scale systems so hard to reason about? You may have guessed it's the complexity. Large systems have many parts, and when you want to discuss or reason about them, you're really trying to juggle the way each of these parts work in your head. These days, many services are developed as a network of microservices, which provide excellent development velocity, though contribute to the complexity in the life of a single request and the interactions of those various services. On the other hand, even software built as a monolith is often far for simple in production. In either case, you have configuration layers, storage systems, network discovery and routing, an OS image, a VM image, maybe even a container environment that your apps run in, and finally, a CI-CD system that powers the iteration of deployment. Each of these components all participate in the complexity of a large system, and together they make up a meta system in your production environment. No matter how you slice it, we're all faced with the continued challenge of scaling up complex systems. For about half my career at Google, I had the privilege of working on our storage systems. I worked on both Bigtable as well as a distributed file system, Colossus, which makes use of the Bigtable as part of its implementation. I want to talk through a case study of a problem my team and I face with scaling up. On my example specific, this is really about scaling an infrastructure service, no matter what your business is, and the principles here can likely apply to your environments as well. Okay, some background. Bigtable is a row-based key value store. It's one of Google's highly scalable databases and was the inspiration for the follow-on system spanner. This is a diagram of some of the components of Bigtable that my team was responsible for. For this case study, I'm going to be talking about the big table they managed as part of the Colossus team storing file system metadata. To be honest, there's a lot more to big table than I can fit in this presentation. You can always read about the big table paper or the spanner paper at research.google if that's interesting to you. On top of the complexity there, all sorts of automation and administration has been built on top of the storage system. It's necessary to manage this large system, but also is a significant contributor to the complexity. For this example, though, we don't need to look at everything, and we'll still have plenty of complexity to work with. Here's a simplified view of Bigtable. It's a lot to keep in our head, but at least we can start to reason about it. We have a tablet assigner that hands out row ranges to various servers. Tablet server is responsible for turning data back to the key queries, and each key data pair is maintained exactly by one server at a time. However, even with this simplified view, we sometimes have our intuition fail. Let's discuss this further. Where and why does our intuition fail? Really, understanding production behavior is the core of the SRE role, in my opinion at least. All of the operational work an SRE may do is really just to help build state and domain knowledge to support that kind of systems thinking. Even with good understanding, however, it's challenging to make predictions in all current and future circumstances. There's a dynamic response that a workload will get when it interacts with the system, and, as in the example case, shared infrastructure sees multiple workloads interacting at the same time. Even having experience with production, you can still have challenges in mapping all the possible outcomes on paper. Simulation can help, but that also has limits that can be hard to get right. 
So what a good S3 does when faced with these challenges is reach into the toolbox. And what's the first tool that usually comes out? Probably not surprising, but it's monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. You need the data, you need to analyze it, and you need to visualize it. Having the right data can change one's whole perspective. If people have a gut feeling, make sure they prove the hypothesis with data. Finally, if you don't have the data to prove something, instrument and monitor for it until you can. In my case study, what we ended up doing was collecting samples of performance metrics, such as network, RAM, CPU, and more over time, and did scatter plots of the various relationships. This is one of the many different scatter plots we ended up doing just to explore and visualize the space to see if there was something related in a way we didn't expect. In this case, RAM and CPU had an interesting relationship. Higher CPU usage was correlated with lower RAM usage. This was pretty unintuitive to the team at the time, but when we dug into why, it started to make sense. We found, what we found was that RAM usage was primarily related to how large of a key space a particular server was responsible for. More rows, more RAM. But that RAM actually scaled horizontally quite well as long as there was enough of it total available. We could keep all the important data in that memory. CPU, on the other hand, was more of a problem. Even a relatively small piece of data could have many requests, which would be a bottleneck if there wasn't processing power to respond to queries. The assigner was being smart, moving ranges away from the hot servers, and the cold data was pooling and collecting on the remaining. Over time, new ranges would get hot, and the cycle would begin again. When a server had a lot of available CPU, it was more likely to be selected for the move of a hot range. We historically hadn't noticed this distinction, and for simplicity and ease of management, had all the server size the same. At first, the relative difference was small, but as we scaled up, the hot spots got hotter and the cold spots got colder. It turned out that by having a few beefy sized tasks, along with a bunch of smaller tasks, we could do a much better job at curve fitting the workload. But the story doesn't end there. Back to our original problem statement save resources without impacting performance. In S3, we developed SLOs based on our customers' expectations for a service. Service level objectives, or SLOs, measure how well a service should perform. It combines a service level indicator, or SLI, with a specific target, such as 99.9% .9 of well-formed requests will receive a non-error response, or maybe 99% of queries will complete in less than 100 milliseconds. It's really just a commitment to the customers of a service encoded in some measurable metrics. It's not perfect, but if you put time into it, it can be quite useful. An error budget is simply one minus the SLO, or the amount of errors before a customer starts to hurt. We can use this concept to set reasonable limits on canary practices and experimentation and production, where we can see the real emergent behavior and know when we need to freeze or roll back before customers are getting hurt. To be clear, this doesn't replace your pre-production testing. Instead, it enhances and complements it. Again, in our example, it was very difficult to predict ahead of time if the changes we had made would cause issues. Do we have enough of the big servers? What about hidden gotchas with the new footprint? Instead, the approach we took was to canary the change in a few locations and then slowly roll out over time. The two graphs you see were the quarterly error budgets across all the big tables we were responsible for on this particular team. Each bar is one of the big tables remaining error budgets. It's ordered from best performance, or 100% remaining on the left, to the worst at the right. The top shows the performance prior to rolling out the changes in the footprint, and the bottom shows after. What you can see from these graphs was that in addition to scaling up the number of big tables we were responsible for, we were also able to improve overall compliance with the error budgets. In the end, we raised the utilization from the 35% it was before to around 60%. Much, much better, but still opportunities. And engineer's work is never really done. OK, let's pull this all together. I have four main takeaways for you today. First you have to have a way to look at both granular and aggregate performance metrics for your system. This requires a robust metrics collection and instrumentation of your system and services. It's worth it for when you need it. Second, visualize and use the data you're collecting to guide the changes you wanna make. If this data is missing, first see if you can begin to collect it and then come back to your problem statement. Third, SLOs are critically important to talking about your service. It's the codification of the customer's expectations in a measurable way. Without them, you really don't have a way to describe your complex service in terms of what it actually does for the customer. Finally, once you do have SLOs, you can use them to safely experiment, canary, and explore and test changes in your system, the architecture, the functionality, or even the footprint. They can help demonstrate that you're either able to meet the current demands, exceed expectations, or perhaps if you need to freeze, roll back, and return to the drawing board. 
thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure having the opportunity today, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you, Matt. So far in the program, we've covered a lot of ground on how dev and ops engineers can use the new features in Datadog to respond to incidents and go deeper than ever before in complex, large-scale environments. I want to talk about another area that's become just as important for all customers in modern applications, security and compliance. Now, as applications move to the cloud and get built with incredible speed, keeping our customers' data safe has become a key shared responsibility for dev, ops, security, and compliance teams. Here's the thing, though. Security teams operate on much the same type of data as dev and ops, wake up on the same alerts, and spend significant time triaging and troubleshooting issues. And yet, they use completely different tools, which means when an incident occurs, it takes valuable hours of time trying to piece together the issue from various security and monitoring tools. Now, to talk about how we are breaking this silo and bringing application security and compliance monitoring together, here is Cecile from Datadog Engineering. Historically, securing applications and infrastructure has been the responsibility of three main teams, operating mostly independently. As Amit mentioned, this doesn't scale when companies move to the cloud and their production environment grows in complexity. You can't secure what you can't see. In traditional environments, there are a few blind spots that we know of, but it's nothing in comparison to cloud environments where developers are empowered to spin up their own services and infrastructure. In these constantly changing environments, it can be difficult to know what exists and how it's configured. Once you acquire this visibility, the next step is to detect security issues as they arise. Development and operation teams are increasingly responsible for securing their own services, but they may not have the time, the expertise, or the tools to do so. But then, Detecting security issues is not really useful if you don't know how to handle them. When issues are tied to dynamic and ephemeral resources, it can be challenging to understand what their actual impact is on users and systems without powerful analytics. Finally, these security challenges are no longer isolated by team. Successfully addressing them requires to align goals and incentives across the entire engineering organization. Doesn't this sound familiar? Security is starting on the same journey that DevOps did 10 years ago. Actually, modern security goals are aligned with observability practices. This is why back in April, we introduced Datadog security monitoring. When we designed security monitoring, our mission was simple, provide real-time threat detection on top of the Datadog platform so that everyone can play their part in securing their applications and environment. The product leverages 400 integrations to provide full visibility into every layer of your production environment. To give you a security example, you could consolidate your authentication event across your identity provider, your applications, and your infrastructure. Datadog provides turnkey detection rules to flag key attacker techniques. Here, you can see attacks that can be detected using CloudTrail logs. You can also write your own detection rules. With our simple editor, it's very easy to do. For example, we've heard from one of our customers how they analyze application logs to ensure the safety of their millions of users. Their custom rules send anomaly by webhook so that they can be automatically mitigated. Finally, you can filter and correlate these issues. For example, you can review all the user's accounts associated with high severity issues. And from there, you could pivot to related logs or infrastructure metrics. To summarize, the security monitoring product analyzes all your logs to provide your enough visibility to your entire organization in order to detect and investigate any security issue. And with our Logging Without Limits platform, you detect threats across the full stream of ingested data without the cost of indexing and retaining everything. We didn't stop working in April, though. And today, I'm pleased to announce two of our most requested features, 
Starting today, you can rely on out-of-the-box dashboards to manage your security posture and to quickly investigate the behavior of suspicious entities. For example, you could monitor all the IPs tied to a security issue, then drill down into a specific one, and finally, review the associated user authentication events. Then, over the next few weeks, we're going to let you enrich observability data with your own security context, such as the list of engineers and their laptops, but also with Datadog Manage Threat Intelligence. For example, you'll be able to detect network calls from IPs known to be trying to exploit vulnerabilities. When it comes to detecting threats, there's a lot more we're working on. But I'd like to talk to you about another respect of securing the environment. Earlier, we talked about the new challenges that security teams face when they move to the cloud. We've heard from many of you that you don't want to stop at detecting threats. You want to prevent them. That's why today, I'm very excited to announce that we're adding compliance monitoring to Datadog, so you can proactively catch misconfigurations. Compliance monitoring tracks the state of all your cloud native resources, such as security groups, storage buckets, and load balancers. We analyze their state continuously, not just when they change. We're also enhancing the Datadog agent to continuously review the configurations of your host and containers, as well as to monitor the integrity of their files and folders. Capturing the states of all your resources and workloads allows you to get ahead of potential misconfigurations and maintain compliance with external frameworks. Maintaining an inventory of your resources also enhances the visibility into your environment. It lets you detect new attacker techniques and it accelerates your investigations. The compliance monitoring beta starts today. Let's take a look. Here we've enabled compliance monitoring. So Datadog is now continuously monitoring the state of our cloud resources. Our AWS configurations are being monitored by crawlers. The Datadog agent is performing file integrity monitoring on a host and containers. And we have above 50 detection rules activated for us. This is a default dashboard. It comes out of the box. Here we can see that we have a bunch of PCI issues. Let's look at this first one, for example, and try to figure out what's happening. Here, we have a data store with unrestricted inbound access, meaning it's open to the internet. This is a compliance issue, but it could be a severe security issue too. So let's investigate. Here I can see my signal. Clicking on it, I see when it happened and the associated resource, in this case, our security group. I have a short description, but also remediation steps, in this case, I should remove the security group rule and replace it with a more restrictive one. We also capture the raw data that triggered this alert. And because data can collect this data, you can write your own custom policies on top of it. And with a simple editor, it's very easy to do. You don't need any query language. Here, we see the actual configuration file. And indeed, we can see that the default port for this data store as unrestricted access. This is potentially really bad if this security group has many hosts in it. So let's find out. I can easily pivot to my related host. Here, fortunately, a single host is in the security group. So at least our issue is limited, but we still don't know its origin. So let's see if we found anything else suspicious on this host. I'm jumping back to my signal explorer filtering with my host ID. And here, I see that I have a few issues. And in particular, this is interesting. I see that the configuration file for my data store has been modified. This is a file integrity monitoring event captured by the Datadog agent. It tells us which sensitive file was modified, as well as which process did it, Vim in this case, indicating that an engineer manually edited this file, a very bad idea on a production environment. And with this, we've probably identified the source of our compliance breach. We can take actions to fix it. So let's recap. With compliance monitoring, we get an overview of our compliance posture. We've detected a misconfiguration as soon as it occurred, and we've quickly find a probable cause for it. By fixing it, we're preventing a potentially severe security issue, and we're maintaining compliance with PCI. 
And that concludes our demo. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let's summarize what we've talked about today. We've introduced default investigation dashboards. We're adding threat intelligence enrichment, and we're launching our new compliance monitoring offering to prevent security issues in your production environment. Amit, back to you. Thank you, Cecile. Now that we've talked about breaking yet another silo, let's switch gears and talk about something totally different. Datadog as a platform, a platform on which you could build your own applications using the same real-time data gathering, the visualizations, the workflows, the alerting that we at Datadog use to build new products. A platform where you can build your applications not just for yourselves, but also others. Instead of saying too much myself, I'm going to pass it to Michael. Thanks, Amit. You have heard about many new products today. In closely monitoring your code, the digital experience of your customers, or your infrastructure and applications. I'm here to focus on products not written by Datadog. Those products written by customers and partners who are building on the Datadog platform and to talk about the ecosystem that they sustain. From the start, we built Datadog as a customizable, open platform. Many of you have built integrations and tooling that build on top of this platform to extend Datadog's capabilities beyond the over 400 integrations we support out of the box. A curious engineer monitoring their own systems who becomes an expert in a commonly used component might want to provide that expertise to the community. Some who started this way went on to build whole businesses on Datadog, analyzing the telemetry already being sent from customers, augmenting that telemetry with their own domain knowledge and providing new insights. For instance, our partner Fairwinds sells Kubernetes compliance and workload cost optimization. Or Rapdev, who has developed integrations for a range of products like Oracle Times 10 or Office 365. Today, we launched the Datadog Marketplace, a way for you to discover all of those solutions that those partners and users have built. A developer can now distribute and share what they've built and even monetize it if they'd like. They will list an app in the marketplace and you can install or buy those solutions. And as with all of our offerings, you will have a two week free trial so you can explore and find the products you need with no risk. Let's look at the marketplace. Here you see in addition to the Datadog integrations, the marketplace where vendors provide their products. I am buying Fairwinds Insights to take a deep dive on Kubernetes with the reports on compliance and cost optimization. Cloud costs of Kubernetes workloads are often particularly tricky to derive as the multi-tenant nature of those workloads means that it's not sufficient to account for the VMs themselves. So now that I've purchased this app and set up an account with Fairwinds, a default dashboard has been provisioned in the app. I can see that there are a number of efficiency action items that Fairwinds has surfaced about my test cluster. In the table here, the workloads on my cluster are enumerated. I can see that there are recommendations for one of them to reduce costs of the workload significantly. In this case, I've drilled down into the Fairwinds UI to see that based on the actual historical behavior of this workload, that memory limits are too high. Memory limits that are replicated for each pod in the deployment. This is just an example of one partner application built on the Datadog platform and available through the marketplace. I also want to thank Fairwinds, RapDev, IO Connect, and Trek 10, our launch partners who have been invaluable for understanding the needs of both their customers and supporting vendors themselves. If you want to build and distribute on the Datadog marketplace, email us to join our early access program by August 30th. We're excited to work with you to provide tools that everyone will be able to use to gain insights into their infrastructure, their customers, their teams, processes, and businesses. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. I can't wait to see all the new apps and integrations our partners and developer community are gonna build and share via this new marketplace. Now, as you've seen through all these presentations, the Datadog platform is evolving rapidly. 
with a changing world where application agility, availability, and security have become key to business success. And our mission remains to break the silos between different teams and help you make sense of massive volumes of data so you can solve your application issues much faster. And what we showed you today, this is just a preview. We have many, many more things in stock. So please stay tuned over the course of the next year for many new announcements in these and related areas. And as always, we welcome all feedback and our product managers and partners are available throughout the event in the virtual exhibit hall for deep dive discussions on these announcements and many new other things. Thank you all again for attending and we wish you a safe and healthy rest of the year.